Hi, my name is Kayla and I help business owners with their QuickBooks Online. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reconcile a checking account um, and I'm going to cover some common questions that I've been asked from other business owners. All right, so where we're going to start is the menu on the left side. We're going to come down to accounting. And when either when you hover over accounting, a sub menu might pop up over on the right here and then just click reconcile. This is the new menu. You'll just have to click on accounting. And then for in my case, it just took me straight to the reconcile page. You might have to click on the menu to go to the reconcile page. So that's where we are. Come down to account, you'll have a drop down list of different bank accounts, credit cards, they're all gonna be here. So we're just gonna do a checking account in this video. And you'll see the last time that you reconciled. So for us, the last time we reconciled was December, but maybe this is your first time reconciling this account, then you won't have a link here. And beginning balance will either be zero if you haven't, if you just started using that account or, um, or whatever the beginning balance is for that time period, for that month, which you will get from your bank statement. So basically we're gonna take this screen and compare back and forth to the bank statement that you receive from your actual bank. So here I have a sample bank statement. And here we have an opening balance and what was our ending balance for the month? Let's say we're gonna reconcile January. So a checking account usually will go from the first to the last day of the month. So in our case, since it's a sample, but we're just gonna pretend it says it's going from January 1st to January 31st. And it's giving us the beginning balance as of January 1st. And here's the balance that it ended on, on January 31st. All right, and then here is total, um, total deposits and total payment. Um, for the checking account during the month of January or during the time period of the statement. Okay, so now we're going to take this information and compare back to QuickBooks. Now the numbers are going to be different because I'm using a sample company and this is a separate sample statement. So the numbers will be different, but that's the same, same idea. So now let's return to QuickBooks. And we're going to compare, is our beginning balance the same as the bank statement? So again, for, for us, we're just going to pretend the number is the same, but for you, it should be the same number, same amount. And then we're going to get our ending balance. So this would be, in our case, it would be here. But for the sample company, the ending balance for January is $2,351.92. And the ending date, this is the ending date of your bank statement. So we come back here and see what date did it, did it end on? It's January 31st. Okay, so that's how to fill out this first screen. And now we're ready to start reconciling. So once we click this, QuickBooks is gonna compare this information from your bank statement to what's recorded in QuickBooks, the transactions that are recorded in your QuickBooks account. All right, so first let's just go over what are we seeing here because there's a lot of information. So the top section is, and there's actually a collapse view on the right. So basically we're saying in the January, in the month of January, we had this many payments and this many deposits. If I expand it, and that should match up to your bank statement. If I expand it, it's saying our beginning balance was this amount. And after we subtract this amount of payments in January, add this amount of deposits in January, we have an ending balance January 31st. This number should be the same as this number. So up top, we should have the same amounts from what our bank statement says and what QuickBooks has as the ending balance for January. So the great news for us is there's a zero difference. If we compare the statement balance and the QuickBook balance, it's the same, it's the same amount, there's no difference, green check, that's great. But we're not quite ready to just hit finish now. We will, but we're not, we're not there yet. So let's come down and here we have a list of all the transactions for January. Now keep in mind, this is not all the transactions of your business. 
this is just for the account you're reconciling. So for che your checking account, these are the transactions in January just for this checking account. So anything in another, another account or petty cash, anything like that, it's not gonna be on this list. You'll have to reconcile an account one at a time. So these are January checking accounts transactions. And what's happening here, why this is all checked off for us, if you're used to kind of doing it on pen and paper, you'll, you'll take your checkbook register and then your bank statement, and then you just copy line by line, look back and forth, make sure everything that's on the statement is everything that you have in your register, and you check off one row at a time. Here, we don't have to do that. And the reason is because we're using the bank feed. And that is, I'll come back over here. If you're using this banking menu where you've connected any of your checking accounts or credit cards, if you've connected anything where it's downloading the transactions from your bank into QuickBooks. If you're using this feature, then you're, you're saving yourself a lot of time when it comes time to reconcile. So here, once you've entered all the transactions for that month, let's return to reconciling and we'll resume reconciling. And you'll see this column, all these green boxes, this is telling us these, if it has that green symbol, it's telling us these transactions were entered through that bank feed feature. So that just saved you a lot of time coming here. It'll automatically check off all those rows for us. So big time saver if you use the bank feed. And let's get rid of those little messages. But here, we're gonna look at our transactions. This is also a good, good chance before you officially reconcile this month just to look over and make sure, is this where I want things to be? So you can double check the transaction. Is this in the correct category? Memo, you'll probably have this filled out if you're using the bank feed. It'll copy um, the bank detail information. It'll copy it here, it should. So this should also be filled out so you can compare what it says on the bank statement to how you categorize it in the vendor or customer you selected. This is a good chance to give it a final, final check to make sure everything looks how you want it to be. And we didn't have to check every single transaction, so that's nice. But come down and notice there's one that's unchecked. Now let's talk about why that is. So the reason is it's unchecked because QuickBooks did the math and automatically realize if we check off this row, it's gonna give us, it's gonna throw us off and we won't be able to have, it's not gonna reconcile to the statement balance. So that's where QuickBooks realize, wait, if we uncheck $200, then our QuickBooks balance, checking balance, and our statement checking balance, they will be in agreement, they will be reconciled reconciliation. So that's where QuickBooks automatically realized that. But so that is correct. That is correct. But I always like to double check why it did not check it off because maybe there's an error and it should be checked off. It should be included. So let's double check to make sure why it's unchecked, why it doesn't fit in our statement ending balance. And let's find out just to make sure if there's some error. So here, notice the dates. So this is a common reason why something might be unchecked and it's probably gonna be at the bottom of the list or at the end of the, the statement period, the end of the month. The reason is for this one, this was a check we received from a customer, but for whatever reason, we didn't cash that check right away. We waited to deposit the check a while later. And then of course it had to wait to clear in the bank. So the dates are different. The date that we received the check was in January, but we didn't deposit it and it didn't clear until February. So this, this sale of $200, this check that we received of income, this is not on the January statement. It's on the February statement. So this is why it's unchecked and turns out this is correct. We're gonna leave it unchecked because it doesn't belong on the January statement. It didn't clear until February, so it's okay. We're gonna uncheck it when it's time to reconcile February. You'll see it on your February bank statement and then it will be checked off 
the next time you reconcile. So in our case, it's unchecked, but that is correct. We're going to leave it unchecked. Um, and this is a common situation, especially when you reconcile credit cards. And that will be that will be another video. But um, especially when you reconcile credit cards, you usually have to kind of look at the bottom. And that if just in case QuickBooks didn't catch the the math there, um, and if it's off in the in the top, if it's saying that there is not a zero difference, it might be because you need to uncheck some transactions that actually belong to the next statement. Okay, so in our case, everything looks good. We've looked over everything. And what you can do is filter the list. So if maybe you have a lot of transactions for January, so you can filter this to say, let me look at only deposits, check it over, looks good. Now I'll check or click on payments tab and I'll just check it. This looks good. And then you can click on all to see it all again. Okay, so now we're happy with this and it does look good. So now we are actually ready to reconcile. So as you get going and as you do this more often, it does get a lot quicker if you're using the bank feed. So just check at the top section, does this match with what your bank statement says? And give, um, just double check your categories. Does this look right? Anything that should be fixed? and double check what's being checked off or not checked off to make sure if there's anything that you should fix. Now, let's say that there is something that's wrong and it's saying, it doesn't say it's a zero difference. Maybe it says it's off by another amount and it has this, this warning symbol. So if that happens, some people just like to go ahead and just say, I'm gonna just go ahead and reconcile, finish now, I don't care. And I'm just gonna reconcile this account. That's not the best idea because it's going to create a mess down the road. So there's some reason that it's not matching up. So there's some reason for this. So find out what that is before you actually reconcile. Maybe you need to ask for help from a, um, a QuickBooks advisor or just maybe another person on your team just to get another set of eyes looking at it to maybe you're overlooking something. So just, just make sure you actually resolve any issues and get it to a zero difference before you click finish just to save yourself, make, make life easier down the road. So in our case, we are all set. We're going to finish, click done. All right, and now we are returned to the main reconcile screen and it has been reconciled for January. So in our case, that is correct. And come the, um, after February is over, we get our statement for February. We can return to this page and do it again for February. All right, so that is how to reconcile. I will add in a bonus here as far as reading the reconciliation report. So that's just something, this is not something you have to do every month. It's not, um, it's not a regular task, but sometimes it is um, good to know about this feature. So let's say we need to look about a month that we have reconciled before. So in our case, we just need to find some information on January's reconciliation. So let's click on that link and you have a report of what we just did. So here's a report and it's printable as well. So if you just wanna print out as a paper copy to show it's been reconciled, it will say which QuickBooks user reconciled it and when the date that they reconciled it. And it'll say this was the checking account for the January statement. Okay, so let's briefly just see how to kind of read this because it's not obvious right away. So here, this is pretty much gonna match up this top section matches up with your bank statement and it, it should. So the opening balance at the top, ending balance at the bottom, any total deposits, total payments for that month are gonna be here. So that should match your bank statement. This bottom section, this is good to know, unclear transactions as of the end of January. So that means, did we leave any transactions unchecked when we decided to reconcile it? So in our case, we just left one unchecked, that $200 that's really on the February statement. So usually you shouldn't really have anything where it says uncleared as of, and you might need not even have this row if it was just zero. 
So it might have left this row off completely if there was nothing. But if there were, it'll say as of or before the 31st. If it's a large amount, or if it's an amount that you know, wait, there was something wrong here, that's a good clue that something is wrong and needs to be fixed. Um, but in our case, we know, okay, it's 200. That's the one we left unchecked on purpose to leave it for the February statement. So that's where you might have something, you might have an amount here and it's correct, but if it's quite a large amount, that might be a sign that, um, that something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. Okay, so here, this is just saying, what was our QuickBooks register balance as of the 31st? So our bank statement was $2351 plus that $200 that we had it dated as January 31st. So our QuickBooks register, this was the balance because it includes the 200. All right, and then here, uncleared transactions after the 31st. So maybe you've entered transactions into QuickBooks after that ending date. So we did enter transactions into QuickBooks after January 31st. So usually that's okay because um, maybe you just didn't have time to reconcile right, at, right away after the month had ended. So usually that's fine. It's this one that's, that, um, that is good to kind of keep an eye on. All right, and then the register balance as of the date we reconciled. So in our case, it was February 20th. And this was our register balance as of that day, but that's okay as well because we um, will see all this info. This will be included when we go to reconcile February. And then here they just list all the transactions. So all the um, checks and payments, money going out list for January, money coming in list for January. And then here's that uncleared. So if, if I see something uncleared and it looks unusually high, that maybe, maybe it's good to kind of um, check into what's going on there. You can come down and it'll give you a list of what was unchecked, the rows that we left unchecked before January 31st. So in our case, we know, okay, yes, that's the $200. We recognize that that is correct. Okay, so that's the reconciliation report. Um, when, let's say we just looked at the one we last did, but if you need to see a report for a prior month, you can go to the reports menu and search for reconciliation, or you can come to the top right, history by account. History by account, and then it will give a list and a report for each month, um, each statement that's been reconciled. So you can look back and check into anything that you are, anything you need to see. All right, so that's how to reconcile a checking account, how to reconcile a credit card. It's not that much different, but there is something um, important if you have maybe a few authorized users and you only get one credit card statement, but you have several um, authorized users on that credit card. So that's where, that's an important um, step if you have that type of situation, but usually reconciling credit card is not that much different. It's just the statement ending date usually falls. You know, it doesn't land on the end of the month. It lands you know, at some odd time of the month. So, but it's, it's pretty much the same process again, unless you have authorized users. And that will be in another video if you need to learn how to do that. All right, so I will see you later and have a great day, bye.